Uh, okay, well, uh, we are recording since the Rocky Mountain in Denver, Colorado. We're dri we're uh, driving just to just to come, and we are. Um, I will ask Benjamin Young, uh, what do you think? What does he think about the cure of AIDS, Benjamin? What do you think about the the cure that we, the the <laughs> the human will reach the a cure of AIDS? Well, I think that this is a very important question, <laughs> um, and and all answers are speculation. Um, I th I believe that um, we will. It, what depends? It's, the, the important part is how you define what is a cure. Right? Okay. Um, I'll give, since we have time, yeah, I'll yeah. give you a, a, my thoughts. Okay. Okay. If one asks the question, is there a cure for AIDS? And if AIDS isn't just having HIV, having the infection, AIDS is death from complications of immune dysfunction, of cancer, of pneumocystis and cryptococcosis, right? Yeah. Okay. Then in the last 15 years, we, 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 we have shown that we have this cure. In other words, antiretroviral medicines cure AIDS. Yes. If you have AIDS and you take antiretroviral medications, AIDS disappears. It disappears. Yeah, right? This is, this is a, a subtle, but I think important distinction. Okay. So we have a we have a cure for AIDS. It's just a medicine that you have to take every day. Yeah. But absolutely prevents AIDS complications if patients take the medicines, have access to medicines. Right. Yeah. And doctors understand this. Yeah. But that that is not the the orthodox or conventional definition of cure. Of cure. Yeah. Cure means you receive a treatment and the disease is gone forever. Yeah. Right. So that's a different definition, and so antiretroviral medicines is not a cure in that way for uh, AIDS or HIV. Okay. But I want to point that out because I want people to to, to, to acknowledge that there, you know, we, we, a disease that used to kill almost everybody with the infection is now preventable. It's cured in a way. Okay. That's. That's not the question you asked, though. Yeah, right. yeah. So the the question you asked is more speculative and, and future looking. And future and technology and yeah. bio, right? Or whatever. Yeah. So I'm a very big believer in in science and technology, and I think that uh, many uh, many advances in science and technology we cannot predict. Okay. We do know, based on my very fortunate conversations with my, my previous uh, mentors who won Nobel Prizes. And they were asked this question about the Nobel Prize and when, would, when will we know if the Nobel Prize will mean a cure for cancer? They, they ask this question all the time. Oh. Um, and the answer is always, well, we don't know. But we do know that usually it takes 10 years to see if a new idea is sufficiently uh, beneficial to, to result in meaningful benefit to society or medicine and so on. So that will say that my prediction therefore is that we will not see a new cure for HIV for 10 years at least because we don't have a new technology today that gives me this, this uh, right. definite idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, we talked earlier about the Berlin case, and the case of the patient with with HIV uh, and leukemia who's given the bone marrow transplant. Yes. And this patient is apparently cured of his HIV with um, a co-receptor mutant stem cell transplantation. Yes. Right? Um, and there's a lot of excitement about this, as we've discussed. That excitement, I think, is, is a little misplaced because it leads people to think that everybody should have bone marrow transplantation. Oh, okay. uh, and I think that that is, that is, okay. that is the incorrect conclusion um, from that discussion. Yeah, okay, right? okay, 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 okay. Um, but it does say that manip genetic manipulation 
of HIV co-receptors can result in very meaningful reduction in HIV uh, and benefits to patients. So I think that we need to be thinking much more aggressively about how to genetically manipulate HIV co-receptors. And that, in, and that has started already. So yes. we talked about zinc finger strategy, or strategies to, to genetically modify the zinc finger domain of CCR5 co-receptor. And those data look very encouraging, very early, very preliminary. And it may not work, and it will take, if my, if my mentor's advice is correct, it may take another nine or ten years to know. But I am, I am very encouraged uh, that that process will lead to a, a strategy that may enable people living with HIV to not have to take medicines every day. Maybe you call that a cure. Maybe, maybe, maybe HIV will not be eliminated from the body. And then some would say, well, that's not a cure. Yes. Right? Like, like, like purpose, like, um, Another virus, uh, the people will have it forever. Yes, but but not not have disease or not yes. die. Yes, yes. And I think that that would be for me an acceptable, a very acceptable next step. Maybe not the perfect cure. Yeah. But um, a conversion to a, 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 a virus that does not cause disease may be more difficult to transmit to other people. And may lead to a strategy that uh, could eliminate the virus, like like like, uh, the, the, uh, like the polio with yeah. with uh, we think yeah, about with that with sufficient vaccination. Yes, yes. So, I am cautiously hopeful. Hey, in in, in that's another question. What about the, the vaccination? Yeah, vaccination. Much more difficult. Much more. Yes, I think vaccination is actually. Um, Vaccinations, the history of vaccine research has told us that vaccine discovery either works very quickly yeah. or maybe never. Um, yeah. So, um, and that is not a function of the vaccines, of the vaccine discovery, it's a function of the, of the, of the virus or the pathogen. Okay. Um, and so, so some viruses and some bacteria were very easy to develop vaccines. Even recently, for example, rotavirus. We now have rotavirus vaccine only maybe 10 years after the process for discovery started. And now rotavirus vaccine is, is approved by US FDA, it's available, you know, and now being distributed worldwide. Yes. So maybe 10 years from discovery to clinical trials to, to approval and distribution. We've been working on HIV vaccines for 20 years. Which, which uh, uh, discover did you felt that was the the most um, expectatives and uh, the finally the the the, the worst um, results in in the history of your HIV treating patients? Uh, so the worst discovery. The, the, The discover that makes make a, make people make physicians think that this is the one, and they say, "Oh no!" Oh, well, I, I don't know about about vaccines, okay. But the, the history of HIV has many lessons of, of premature judgment. Ah, okay. Right. For example, um, the idea of. Um, Sequential monotherapy with medications. Okay. Right? Yeah. Before you were a doctor, I was doing this. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. And we thought it was the right thing to do, but we were wrong. Yeah. Um, so there's many lessons in um, in drug resistance that came from mistakes that we made. Mistakes that we made trying to save lives, but but we now know that we could have done it better, and we now do. So sequential monotherapy, dual therapy, um, are, the, are the best examples of that. 
Um, another example is, is underestimating the possibility of toxicity. Um, so, best example is, um, uh, is stavudine. Stavudine, right? Stavudine was one, one of the most widely prescribed medications in 1990, in the late 1990s. Very well tolerated in the short term. Um, some people develop neuropathy. Uh, some people develop pancreatitis and so on. But aside from those, most people tolerate very well. And four or five years later, we realized that stabudine was responsible for uh, a lot of the lipodystrophy uh, that, that we saw. And it was promptly uh, discontinued worldwide. Yes. But many thousands, hundreds of thousands of patients received this medication had very long-term toxicity from the medication. So this is an example of, of uh, one, to be careful with new medications, to insist on long-term, not just short-term, but long-term safety analysis, uh, and also um, a lesson in humility, to be humble, because what we think is best today might not be, and that might, we might be wrong. Yes. So to always think critically about where are we? Yes. And where is the science? And to use the best possible science whenever possible. Yeah. Um, well, I will. Well, thank you for listening. <laughs>